And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Just go ahead and keep that mask on because it's Halloween and everyone wants to wear an ugly mask like that. That's beautifully wow. done, dude. Well, I got the wow. same thing going. So it's all right. Happy Halloween to everyone. I hope you had a great one. Hope you took the kids out and went and just walked for miles so they could get a ton of candy. How do you, how was it, man? You took you had to take your kids out there. Let's hear it. It was awesome, man. You know what's funny though is my son's biggest highlight though was yesterday we were at an a, like a a thing for my for my daughter and it was like a it's like a CrossFit for kids. And um my son looks over me and goes I think that's I think that's dude perfect. I'm like who dude perfect? Who? Okay, there's one who's, I don't who's know who dude, dude perfect. Who's the, who like he's like yeah, that's, I think that's him. I'm like huh? His name is dude dude per his name is dude perfect, not dude dude perfect. perfect. Dude. And I'm like all right, whatever. I'm like I was like well if you think it's him and you want to meet him, go ask him. You know. So he walks <laughs> over. He's like excuse me, are you? And the guy goes yeah, I'm him. He's like yeah. And I'm like and he goes I said ask him if you can get a picture. So he goes, can I have a picture? He's like, yeah, he was a really nice guy, super nice okay, guy. Okay, that's good. I believe the guy's name is Tyler or something. And uh, anyways, I have no idea who this guy was. Okay, but who's there. Dude Perfect? Exactly. So I'm You like, still okay. don't know? I, I do now. Okay. I do now. Do you know who he is? I have no fucking clue. Exactly. Dave, can you pull this guy up? It's a, <laughs> it's a group of them. They're friends. But this is, he's on Instagram. He's got his own YouTube channel. I mean, he's him with a, a couple other guys, I guess. I haven't looked at anything yet. But they're guys that do trick shots. Uh, they do like a, really, oh, a bunch of like trick, really trick cool shots trick with the, shots. The basketball stuff. Yeah, like basketball. I think football, whatever it is. Like they, okay. they do. Yeah, out of a moving car, out of like I don't know all, all this stuff. Anyways, they do a bunch of cool stuff. All right. I've seen a couple things. Anyways, twelve million subscribers on Instagram. Well, obviously he's doing something. I'm like, right. <laughs> I was like, dude, dude, literally, dude, dude, you're perfect. This is pretty impressive. This is pretty impressive. <laughs> I was, it caught me off guard. So the, you know, the fact that my son, I was like, I, I don't know if he's going to be sitting here at this little thing. Like, yeah, whatever. I didn't even know who he was, but it was, he was very nice, very friendly. And, uh, you know, and, and my son was like, afterwards, he goes, Hey, you know, I have, I, I want to go ask him a question. I said, son, you had your moment. <laughs> your picture i said you, you had your did picture it? You, you had, had your, your chance picture. don't bother him he was there you know watching uh, his family uh you know do their thing like my daughter was and it was just Good. one of those conversations i just told him i said hey you got to leave him alone this is kind of his time and his peace with his kids and so yeah, let with him be yep. yeah with his family so i just you know it was kind of but it was it was kind of funny it's kind of do you think it's like for what about you do you ever have these things where you feel like it's a little weird that your son is more interested in people like the, instead of like what you did or what you nah, nah, loved it, <clears throat> and I love that he's not interested in fighting at all. But it, well, it's, here was one of the problems for mine. I go and uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to end up saying something really bad here. <laughs> at the time, I'm not saying he's this way now, but at the time, my son loved Barry Bonds. He was a San Francisco Giants fan. I was a Dodgers fan, obviously. Grew mm. up a Dodgers fan. And here's my son living in freaking Southern California, and he is a massive San Francisco Giants fan based upon Barry Bonds, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens that one of my ex-partners on LAPD grew up with Barry Bonds. He would, mm -hmm. And I worked with this guy a lot, and we were very good friends. And uh, you know, I actually ended up going to his wedding up in San Francisco, and Barry was – there and he put us together and we almost came to blows because I thought he was a dipshit. But, <laughs> but but my friend had gotten my son, you know, assigned Barry Bonds, you know, freaking baseball bat. He'd given him a you know, artwork of him and stuff and all kinds of stuff. So my son just loved him. So got you know, my son wants to meet Barry Bonds and I'm like, no, you're not nah. meeting Barry Bonds. <laughs> what a jerk. I am. I was like, oh. no, no, you're not going to meet him. I've met him. You're not going to meet. Him. Him. Yeah. And it was he was that bad wow he really was he was so arrogant and such a dipshit okay it was really here we're at the wedding the 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 bride's father buys my friend for his wedding uh present he gets an autographed jersey of michael jordan 
and it's all framed up and everything. And that's what he presents to him at the wedding. Wow. Barry Bonds stands up. Well, you didn't ask for mine. You're right. He didn't. So sit wow. the fuck down. Wow. <laughs> you know, he's looking you go, are you that fucking like, you think you're that Was well, it meant to be dude? a joke though? I can no, see that No, it a was joke. not, dude. I'm telling oh, you, everyone wow. looked at him the way he did it is like, really? Ouch. Stop. Ouch. Brutal. I was just like. So, you know, I was I was not a fan, so I didn't let my son be much of a fan. He was still a fan of him, but uh, at the time I was like, nope, not going to meet him. Not going to do it. I've had some experiences with people that uh, like I've already said about Jean-Claude Van Damme. I just met him most recently. Yeah. And just not impressed. And I grew up watching him. I was, you know, from Bloodsport to Lionheart to all these other things, right? But the one I think the one that kind of most disappointed me the most was I'm a Chiefs fan. I grew up in the Bay Area. Yes, so you are. Anyone that came from a, a Niners or a Raiders team and then ended up on the Chiefs, it was almost like, yeah, we got them now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> to my family, to my cousins and all my uncles and everyone that were, che- were, that were Niners and Raiders fans. Well, the Chiefs ended up with a lot of Niners. And they also ended up with one Raider or a couple Raiders, but one of them was Marcus Allen. Yeah. And I was so I See, loved watching I him know, run the ball. And this hurts He's me a, because I have met Marcus. I have talked with Marcus. He's a great guy. And I know an that asshole. you just had a fucking horrible had, time. Well, it, you know what it was, right? It was more of we did a, we did a charity event together. It was like I was considered to be like one of the celebrity type guys. That yeah, was, that was that was how I met him at a golf thing. Yeah, yeah. Rod Woodson was with us. He was it was a little rough around the edges, but he, you could tell he was who he was. That's who he was. And I, I love I love meeting guys like that. The guys that. Yeah. He, he he was kind of a little brash, but he was very stern with the way he talked. He was he had a little presented himself more like a man's man, and I can I can you know can support that. But it, it is what it is. Yeah. But he was a very nice guy. Um, but Marcus Allen had a thing about him that just afterwards he would avoid people for interview for not interviews, but for autographs after when we were at the dinner and stuff. He didn't even really go to the dinner. He was chasing after. You know, some, 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 uh, you know, chase and tail. Yeah. Yeah. Chase he did that a tail. lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't, whatever. I get, I get it. Whatever. I get it. But it was just very, I think what it was, it was very rude about it. Just yeah, very rude that's about too like, bad. not just with me, not just with me. It was, look, I, I don't, I don't care. Sometimes I like, like majority of the time. I don't care how you treat me, but I watch from a distance. I'm one of those. I'm kind of a people watcher is I watch and see how you treat other people. Yeah. And he was an ass. And that that would kind of turn me off right from there. And I was, and then then as I played, you know, some uh, a couple holes with him, and then we met up, you know, at, at back at the bar area. And we were all having drinks, and just the way he carried himself, just different than everyone else. The hands down nicest celebrity I've ever met in my whole life. I mean, outside of Channing Tatum was um, was Marshall Falk. Hands Marshall down, Falk's a great guy. He was yeah. phenomenal. You know, I would also say probably Eric Dickerson, but he's just quiet. He didn't say a lot. Yeah. He was, he, you know, uh, but very, very nice. I'll tell you who's one of the best. I think, and you met him. One of the best guys that you could meet, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. He is. I actually taught Shaquille because Shaquille became a Port Authority police officer in Los yeah. Angeles. I was one of his instructors and stuff, but I did stuff with him. But, you know, I always tried to, you know, stay, stay away. He, he would point me out, John, oh. right? <laughs> and he, I, I introduced my son to him. My, the funniest thing is watching my son look at Shaquille. You know, mm. he, he's look, looks at him, looks up, looks down, <laughs> then looks at me and goes, he's got the biggest feet I've ever seen in my yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I, yeah, I met him down in uh, down in like the Gilroy Morgan Hill area in, in California. He was down there for a little bit yeah. uh, visiting some friends, and I just so happened to get a chance to meet him. Look, super nice, super nice super guy for guy. such a big guy. Super nice guy. Oh my God. No, no ego whatsoever involved. Oh, in super good with guy. him. But oh. um, but for me, I think because I grew up my whole life being a Chiefs fan, and you see this guy on yeah. your team just tearing people up, and you're. You know, um, you're rooting for you him. Want, you're rooting and for him. You, you don't want up. to. And then you then afterwards, <laughs> you're like, I don't care. I mean, he was already right. retired. He was done. Okay. You know, when we were playing golf, it, was, it wasn't around the same time. You know who I want to meet now, who's probably my favorite player I think ever to play uh, for the Chiefs is uh, Jamal Charles. Okay. Very, every, after seeing interviews, you know. Jamal he Charles, this, hell of, he was yeah, a hell of a back. Dude. Hell of a back. I, I, can, yeah. I can't imagine if, the, if this Chiefs team had him now. I mean, I, I don't even know what, like, we'd, I don't even know if that would be a conversation to have. 
Like he he was to me just someone just cut through. He was the hot knife through butter, man. He hit the holes in the seams and he was oh, yeah. gone. He was yep. gone. Yeah, he was good. And so and and what I like is he grew up with the uh, I read some stories on him. He grew up with a speech impediment, you know, kind of was teased a little bit when he was younger, then just became a fantastic athlete, sprinter, you know, for the University of Texas. Oh yeah, he was uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal uh, player. And every time I've ever seen an interview with him, he has been just super humble about everything he's done. Just a fan seems like a very fantastic person. But, you know, media does play tricks on you with the way that they do interviews and stuff. And, you know, people are media trained. But I feel like with him, I think you get what you get from him. You know, I think that's really who he is. But it broke my heart with the Mark Sound thing, man. It broke yeah, my that's heart. too bad. I was like, I did, especially I, I, I was I, just still young. I was still like in my 20s when I met him. And I was like, oh, that's bad. Late 20s, yeah. late 20s. Yeah. yeah. I did. I told you my Dick Bucka story, right? No, I, I'm Dick sure Buc- you did, but you know, you know, I don't know if you realize this. You've told me a lot of stories, man. <laughs> fucking 78 years of stories. Fuck, yeah, is a man, long time. It's a lot of stories, man. Yeah, I met Dick Buck. Is not. I didn't really meet him. It was like one of those. We. I was working West Bureau Crash, which was a gang unit in L.A. And Dick Buckus was always. He was my hero. God, I love watching Dick Buckus. Man, I was a little kid when he was playing, and then he he was gone. But I always admired him, and it was always you know. He was the man, and uh, we're working Westboro Crash, and we're in Pacific Division at the time, which is by the beach. So we're, we love being by the beach; it was great. And uh, this stolen car happens, and we we back this unit up, and it ends up that Dick Buckus' son is in the car. He's not driving, but he's in the car. So take him to Pacific Division, and the lieutenant there is a guy that worked for my dad. His name was Bob Tumas. We called him Cement Head. He was just such a rock head about stuff, but a great guy. So like a podcast did. Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> Tumas was a cousin of Buckus. And so he he sees the kid, right, and goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> goes the, He calls on the phone and calls Dick Buckus up and says, all right, I'll see you. I'll see you in about 10. Right? And I was like, Dick Buckus is coming to the station? Yeah. Uh- Right, and everyone was like, "Oh!" And we're just waiting. We're it's <laughs> just waiting, yeah, so dude. Good. And through the front door walks Dick Buckus. And we're all behind the door, kind of looking like, that's "Damn, so that's fucking Dick Buckus!" Right. So the one, my partner takes the kid, brings him out to Dick Buckus. Right. Dick Buckus kind of looks over at his kid as he's being walked out. Looks at Bob Tuman and says, "Bob, just wait one second. He walks over to the kid and goes, "Bam!" <laughs> he Hits him upside the head in the station. He says, I'm fucking not done with you. And he goes back to talking to Bob. To Bob, how you been doing, right? And all this stuff. And I go, that's Dick Buckus, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was so impressed. So I didn't really didn't meet him, but I got to see him in yeah, action. Yeah, you had to see him in action. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was my Dick Buckus. I loved it. I was like, oh, that was the coolest. <laughs> it's funny how some some uh, celebrity stories stick out. I mean, with the Channing situation, I was able to. I spent like a couple weekends hanging out with him in Vegas. He was a nice guy. I mean, I met him at nice the Strike guy. Force. Yeah, yeah. So, so I met him yeah. at Strike Force a bunch of times. Met him in, in Vegas a couple of times at some of Kung's fights at, at, in the UFC. We we hung out quite a bit you know, when he was married to Jenna, but uh, he just got engaged. Contra- congratulations to him. I believe it's to. Uh, uh, Lenny Kravitz's uh, daughter, Zoe Kravitz, uh, I believe. So, uh, yeah, good, uh, good on him. Good on um, him. Good on him. Congratulations to him. But yeah, he's super nice guy. Very humble. Very quiet. He tries to keep to him, kind of keep to himself. You know, when we were in Hollywood, or not Hollywood, but uh, Vegas. You know, but uh, but he was very, very nice and very thoughtful for every every person, mainly females that came up to get autographs. But he he was very mainly uh, very nice, very nice guy. Uh, nothing bad to say about him, man. Good guy. All right, you maybe, know what? We've talked long enough. Maybe about we should talk about something to do with some fighting. fights. But yeah. you know what? I'm going to be honest though, John. This card, I'm not thoroughly impressed with. I know there's some big fights and there's a couple big fights on here, but I'm really excited about the card that just got announced in Austin, Texas. Yeah, I don't care. You you were more impressed with Magic Mike. I can see it. it you you're absolutely right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, you know, it's it's funny. I was actually there was. There was some conversation to be had. I was supposed to be in Magic Mike 2. Conversation. In Magic Mike 2. I was supposed to possibly be uh, casted in that. There was a conversation to be had about me doing it. And yeah, it was. uh, It should have happened. It should have happened. You know why it didn't happen? I fucking dance. Don't tease me. I know why it didn't happen, dude. (laughs) 
<laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know. I know. Jesus. Uh, John's hey, talking about my winky over here. It, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're supposed to keep that. Sh- hey, let me just I'm say. Not saying, I didn't hey, say a word. Hey. I'm a grower. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> hey, I'm a, I'm a grower. I'm not a shower. All right, baby. Uh, I, what, what? I saw that manscape ad. Yeah, you saw uh, that manscape ad. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, oh, I, I mean, shit! Fucking gained two inches. <laughs> uh, damn! Right there. That was it. Oh shit! Uh, oh, John, John. This is why we call. This is why they call me Big John. <laughs> uh, dude, oh, you know, I swear to oh, you. Okay, I've been down here. My dad's still in the hospital. But yesterday he was doing better, right? And so you know, mm-hmm. and we're trying to make him laugh. And so my wife comes up with you know the, talking about that this Manscaped commercial because they were talking about you know different things with the podcast and who is sponsors and stuff like that. And he goes, you know, what do you do with it? So we pull up the ad and show it to him. He was not God. impressed. He, was, oh, he, he goes, geez. he goes, I'm so embarrassed by you. Yes. <laughs> This, you know what though? That was a very good ad. That was for, a great ad. The fact that we filmed that in like what? An hour on our, with on our phone. iPhones. With our iPhones. We did good. And then we sent it off to Dave, and Dave put it together in like 20, 30 minutes. Did a nice Dave's, job. I, look, Dave, I give Dave a lot of a hard time about a lot when of things. When Dave does a good job, but, we always praise but him. But when, when, Dave, when Dave puts his mind behind things, he's So we praise good. Dave he's at least good. twice a year. Yeah, there's probably about twice a year. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I saw you sometimes. wanted to talk. To, Come on, baby. Twice a minute. Come like, on, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look, let's go, let's go ahead and get into some UFC fights. What is this, UFC Fight Night 2231? Uh, or is it like uh, 78? No, 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 Paulo. Sao Paulo, so it's an actual Fight Night card. You know, what, what's the number on it? They don't put a number on it. Oh, just oh, is, it is this Brazil. just UFC Fight, Fight Night? Night? Okay, now. Fight Night Brazil. Yeah. Very well, nice. we've got, I actually like, I think that the main event is going to be fun. And Jailton Almeida going up against the speedy one, Speedy Gonzalez. Derek Lewis, because Derek Lewis just got arrested for going 136 miles an hour Jesus. in a 50 mile an hour zone. Way to go, Derek! As long as you're safe and everyone else is safe, I think it's funny. But I think he got released on a hundred dollars, and he is now in Brazil, ready for the fight. So just crazy, <laughs> just crazy. Ugh. Where where in Houston are you doing 100 miles an hour? I have 136 and a 50. 136, 136 in a 50. Jeez. That's a little fast. Have you guys seen the video of him uh, and his? I believe it's his son on the four wheeler, and oh, he yeah, lets the, and he's got it son, on, the, the, and it's the, in gear, and his and son, son grabs, grabs the the, the pushes the, the little thumb throttle, hits the throttle, and yep. fucking drives it right into the house, <laughs> in the corner of the house. And I'm thinking to myself, "Come on, he didn't bro. get hurt then either. See, the man on, is bro. a monster. Come on, bro. Something Come could on, have bro. happened, man. <laughs> yeah, something Jeez. could happen. Uh, but he." Uh, yeah, look, 136 miles an hour is, is no joke. Um, no, but it's pretty fast. Almeida is not going to be moving that fast. I can tell you that. <laughs> he's going to need to be in the stand up. He's going to need to be moving fast in the stand up to get. And in. He definitely look, needs to move that fast if he ends up underneath Derek. You got to get see, yourself out of there fast. Almeida does not have. Good wrestling, so that concerns no, me just that a is, tiny that bit. That is a little bit of a problem because we've a seen good wrestlers problem. actually. Yeah. Have a little bit of difficulty if they don't mm-hmm. get in deep on Derek, and we'll see what happens. But Almeida has been fighting very well, and you got to look and say he's the favorite in this fight. Even though I think isn't Derek ranked above him? Yeah, I believe or, so. Or has he dropped down so much? I don't know. No, I think Derek is like one or two spots ahead. Nah, of him, I, I think Almeida. I think Almeida's ahead. Oh, ahead of him. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I don't I don't Derek know. did I, drop down quite a bit. I don't know where, it, where but, it's at, but it's. John, you you saying that he's he's favored? Almeida is. Yes, uh, it has which, to be. Him being ranked higher, I mean, I probably see the, the, the same thing happening. John can't see it, Josh. Okay, remember. that's right. Yeah, uh, it's eighty year old eyes can't see it. Anymore. <laughs> eighty year old uh, eyes can't see when there's doesn't have there. doesn't have the nine screen and ten, available. John. Nine and ten. Yeah, yep. he doesn't have the. Uh, Are they nine and the ten? Screen up. Yeah, yeah they're nine, nine and ten. ten. Look, right. he's it, they're nine and ten right now. But when I look at this, uh, this is what I'm thinking right now. Doesn't matter. That Derek is a little bit slower. Derek's got the power. Doesn't matter that Derek is not probably the better wrestler, but has decent takedown defense against guys that don't have good wrestling. Yeah, he's got Derek a very good decent. uppercut too. Yeah. He's got a very good uppercut. He's got heavy hands. But we saw in his last uh, his last fight, he is extremely explosive when he chooses to be he's explosive. Fast. He's, he's, like, he's got fast. He's got muscle. speed. Yeah. yeah, he's got speed. And then I just read an article that the last guy he fought, his teeth are still loose. 
from that from that flying knee. His teeth are still loose. It. Like he can't he can't chew still. He's uh-huh. like it's been a he's like it's been a kind of a miserable, you know, uh time so for me right he's now. He's gonna have to put braces back could on. Could be fucking depressing. That could, was what it could be. <laughs> Um, if I couldn't chew food, I got to drink through a straw. It's like having your jaw broke the whole time. Yep. Um, the thing is, is John, you know, this, when you're at the top level, whether it's your rank number 10, number five, number two, any little outside distraction. And this was, this is what it is from last week. That's a fucking outside distraction. Now it's on in the back of your mind, believe it or not, 136 miles an hour. I'm going to go to court for it. I had to bail myself out of jail that that's on your mind no matter what even come fight day fight night all those things it's in there it's in there it's another thing that this weighs on you another thing that you think about throughout the week so you're not your mind's not resting you're not actually focusing on the fight you're focusing on that fucking thing that shouldn't even be there and so look i'm not saying whether Derek lewis was gonna i'm not saying he's gonna win or lose i'm not saying that i'm just saying it's an outside distraction that doesn't add any doesn't doesn't give help. you any doesn't Absolutely help at all does not help at all True. And so, and when like we've said this forever, and I will continue to say this: when you're at the top level, whether you're champion and number one, or number eight and number nine, or number nine and number ten, where they're at right now, it is less than five percent that splits you guys between each other. Oh of, my god! Of what well, happened? It's less. It's way less than that. It, but, way less. Yeah, we're talking. The, perc- we're talking. It's less than a percentage point. Yeah, I would have to agree with you. Yeah, so, we, we've talked about it, but I'm, I'm for yeah. for everyone at home, they just think like, oh, it doesn't matter. You got a speeding ticket, no big deal. No, no, no. no it it's in matter. your mind. It does matter. Like you have, not only that, like, I don't know what he's making, but you just start thinking of lawyer expenses. You start thinking of jail time. You start thinking like, I'm taking time away to go to court. You don't know if you're going to get, you know, he doesn't know if he's going to get 60 days. He can get 30 days, 60 days. He can get 45 days. He can get something for, for doing something like that. It doesn't. It depends on what the judge looks at him and goes, come on, man. What were you doing? Come on. I so give, just, I'm going to give you something yeah, to make an example He's going to say exactly that. Come on, man. <laughs> well, look, we've had Cain Velasquez on. I know Cain's situation was completely different. Yes. Okay? But they left. he left the, that judge left him in jail for nine months. Nine months. Didn't even offer him bail. Okay? Yeah. At all. And that was, and that all depends on the judge. Yes. Meanwhile, on the other side, homeboy that did all the things, okay, he was let out that day, no bail. Yep. The, and so the, the, you don't know what the judge is, is thinking at that moment. This no. is on his mind. No matter what you say, it's on his mind. I look at Derek and I'm like, it's an outside distraction. You just don't need going into a big fight, main event in another country. That's true. I agree don't with you that completely. It, it's not a good thing. To have there, he's got to just, but he does have to just take it. That's that's something I'm going to deal with. I got to deal with this first. Mm-hmm. And look, his explosiveness, his power, his unbelievable ground and pound power, which he has. Almeida needs to be careful because he, if he ends up underneath him, he has to be able to either control that position and not allow Derek to posture in any fashion or he's got to get himself up. Look for the submission or get up and get back to your feet. Um, he needs to be in the top position. It Once Almeida is able, if he is able, to put Derek Lewis on his back, now you're talking about yeah. a turtle on their back, a guy that's going to have a hard time getting away from someone like Almeida, and you're going to see Almeida probably finishing the fight in that you know from that position by getting a submission or, or pounding him out. But he, there, there is that equation where you look and you say, he could be in the same dangerous position, though, as far as if his back hits the ground. You need to, you, we talk about it all the time. You go from black belt down to brown belt, down to blue belt and white belt very quickly when your brain gets rattled. And Derek yeah, Lewis, when Derek Lewis is hitting, you're skipping purple belt going right oh, from brown yes, to blue. That's right. That's it's it. Not, you're not even hitting purple. You know, and so you're taking a look at it, man. It doesn't take many from that dude. And I have seen him up t- up close and personal. When he is hitting people on the ground, it's violent. Yeah. It is a violent activity. And, man, he is good at it. So it's one of the things that Almeida absolutely has to keep his back off of the mat also. Who's ever back is on that mat is in trouble in this fight. Yeah, he's he's got to make sure if he does end up on his back that he's not settling there. 
Yeah. He's threatening submissions. And I yep. don't even know how many submissions you want to threaten. You really want to work on just getting back to your feet or scrambling out on the underhook to maybe get to the, yeah. to the get back. Get a reversal. Yeah. yeah, get a reversal, get to the back. I think if you get on the back of Derek Lewis, you have you have a good chance of getting that finish. Oh, yeah. Um, I look at the speed of Almeida, though. Look, Derek Lewis is fast and explosive for that first, you know, first shot, maybe second or third in the first or second. Sorry. Outside of that, though, then you can it start slowing down quick. Yeah, it starts slowing down. Yeah. So I look at Almeida and he's he's got he's got the potential on the feet. I don't know if you want to you want to take that chance too much on the feet. But you also don't want to just go diving at the legs and put no. yourself on bottom. He has to be patient. In yeah. this fight, I think patience is a virtue for Almeida. Mm -hmm. Let the fight come to you. Don't sit there and push things. You start to push things, you're going to make a mistake, and he's going to have the ability to take advantage yeah. of it. So I think the the one thing, look, and this worked for me a lot, because I sparred with a lot of heavyweights when, when I shouldn't have been when I was younger. It's really stupid of you. Yeah, Javier used to make fun of me for that. <laughs> I would spar live with fucking Paul Bonatello, Mike Kyle. You know, never, I never went with Kane, thank God, save my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, w I went, I went with Paul. I went with Rockhold a lot too. Um, but mainly Paul Bonatello and Mike Kyle. I'd spar with Paul all the time. Well, Paul's got a body kind of similar to Derek Lewis. Yeah. And we've seen Derek Lewis get hurt to the body quite a bit. You know, he, from the Volkov, the push kicks up the middle. I mean, he was, he was ruining that fight several times with the push kicks and the body shots. I look at Almeida, use that push kick and that tip kick right up the gut. And every time, or punch to the body. Just straight jabs, straight right hands to the body. And then use that push kick as well. Get him to lunge in on something. Make it easier for you to try to get to a takedown. Also, do not shoot a double leg on this man. He will just flatten you fucking out. Yes. So if you do shoot a double leg, you got to turn that corner. There's no submission threat. Work on turning the corner, winch wiper and your legs out from underneath. And go, he'll go belly down. You go right to the back or right to the side control or whatever it is. Yep. I, I, I try to explain to, to heavyweights... Shooting double legs on these guys is, is not the smartest thing. You know, they fall wrong. They could break your back. You know, all those type of things. <laughs> like, I was surprised I was able to get up after you fell on me that one day in the cage. Hey, I mean, you, you call just, it whatever timber. you want. You decided for you, you're you going to go for your big takedown. Didn't work too well. <laughs> well, you, you tripped over the canvas and I was stuck Was that what it was? Yeah. Something like that. Okay. I got it all on video. I just got to pull it up one day. Yeah, we got to pull that up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But these, this is, um, it's a very, it's, it gives me a little bit of a throwback, John, right? Of like an early UFC days type fight. A good jiu-jitsu guy who's got yeah. decent stand-up, but yep. should not, not be standing with wrestling. Derek Lewis too much. Yeah. Not great wrestling. A very, very, you know, kind of just jiu-jitsu type wrestling. Yeah. Not, maybe not even, you know, that. And yeah. then, but, but more, good off more of back, a foot sweep, body lock, foot sweep type of yeah. takedown. Good. Yeah. We're going to well, find out. Yeah, we are. We're going to find out. And I also think that, like, I think this distraction on Derek Lewis can be a problem. Oh, so. see, we're going to find out. It, that might, yeah. it might be. And it, it is something to think about when mm -hmm. you look at little distractions make big things mm -hmm. happen in fights. So, yeah. All right. We got Gabriel Bonfim going up against my man, Nicholas Dalby. I love mm -hmm. Nicholas Dalby. He is just a dog. This guy fights from a karate stance, He's, he blades himself a lot. He's good everywhere. He's just tough as nails, but. Obviously, Bonfim is undefeated. I think at fifteen and zero. Yep, fifteen and zero. Man, that's uh, guy is good. His brother's on the card. We'll talk about him in, uh, later on and who he's fighting. But Dalby can win this fight. He's going to be the underdog in it, but he can win it because he wins fights by out conditioning people by driving them into a position where they get exhausted. And if there's one thing I'll say about Bonfim. He's an athlete. He's good, and he's good everywhere. But he is a fast twitch guy, and he has to control the fight. He can do that. I'm not saying he can't do that with Dalby, but if he doesn't, and Dalby's the one pushing the pace, look out. He could take over in the fight. Yeah, I think with Bonfin though, he is somebody that within the first two rounds he may potentially get this 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 uh, finish. Yeah, he could. Dalby is someone he's who leaves it. Yeah, he leaves himself out of position quite a bit. And Bonfim, this Bonfim is the better of the two brothers, obviously being fifteen and zero versus his brother, who I believe is what twenty and four or nineteen and four, yeah, something, something along those yeah. lines. So when I'm but he went a long it, time without a loss, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, but then he just lost his last fight. Yeah. But so you gotta, I look you, at you got to look at the guy he lost to. That dude is a stud. He is. He is. I think what Saint you know, the, yeah the 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 UFC was pushing for, on both of them, trying to get them, 
you know, um, up to the top. But I look at Gabriel Bonfim, the one who's 15-0. and 0. Yep. With with him, he threatens everywhere. He's good on the feet. He's got a good arm in guillotine. He's good at um, chasing on the neck. He's good at getting to the back. He's a scrapper, yeah. and he scrambles really well he and gets to these positions. Very well. yeah. And Dalby can't afford to make a mistake. You get lo- you get stuck in one position. You've got to learn just to ditch and abandon it right away. And I don't know if bon- I don't know if Dalby has that in him at the speed and the pace that Bonfim can catch him in transition. Like that's why he's undefeated. So until someone starts to show me some weaknesses, I haven't seen one yet in him. And I've seen him go three rounds, and I've or, yeah, I've seen him go three rounds, but I've also seen him get submissions. So pull up on his last two fights. Can you pull me up? There you go. You know I can't see it, so go ahead. Yeah, just, yeah, I know you can't that. see it. I can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take that back. I have not seen him go the distance. That's right. He has mm-hmm. first round finishes all the way down. His last fight was against Giles, though, right? Trevor yes. Giles? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. But just phenomenal, Never. phenomenal fighter. I'm looking I'm looking to see how he handles someone like Dolby, who's just a scrap or someone that can get out of get out of position, but also get himself out of positions when he's in trouble. But man, so, he can push the pace and don't let him get into a rhythm. John, That's this ain't going thing. the distance. Oh, look at you. Look at this you. This ain't going the distance. You might be right. You might be uh, right on it. Next Paul fight. Fame is very good. There's no doubt about it. He is a stud. But you know what? That's what makes these fights interesting. I mm-hmm. love the next fight. When you're talking about big men, you're talking about Nascimento against Dontel's Maze. And Dontel mm-hmm. Maze is a freaking huge dude. So heavyweights going at it. Um you got to look and you got to say that Rodrigo is the uh, favorite in this. Nascimento is what? Is he, he's got a loss. He's 10 and 1, 10 and 0. What is he? Uh, 19 and 1. 19 is that 19 or is that? No, it's 10. Sorry. Nine, 10 okay. and 1. 10 and okay. 1. 10 and 1. 19. Sorry. Jesus. You know Christ, what? I'm, I'm just going to leave these damn glasses on because I can't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the fine print. I can read the names, but I can't see the numbers. Yeah, big, he's uh, 10 and 1. Yeah, big thing if you. When you're looking at Mays, if Mays can come forward, he can be a problem for anyone. If you can keep him from coming forward, I look at Nascimento to control the fight really well. But so I think it's a good heavyweight matchup. You know, I'm actually looking at the next fight. You got Bahalo <laughs> versus Magomedov. How do yeah. you want to? How do you pronounce his first name? Abu Supian, something like that. No, isn't it just? That was pretty I think good. It's Abus. Abus, but it's, it's Abus. P- Pian, Pian, Abus. Okay, so it's Abus. Abus. Magomedov. Yep. Uh, he's coming off of his loss, I believe, correct? Yeah, I think you so. Click, yeah, who did he lose? So he got super tired in the first round, I believe. Do, do, do. Yep, Sean Strickland, Mr. Pressure. <laughs> I, oh, sorry, I can't take that. I can't say that name. That's John. That's uh, somebody else. That's somebody else. Ah, uh, Mr. Pressure. Mr. Pressure. Uh, John, come on. Go ahead. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yes, but I'm looking. I'm looking at that fight. That that to me is, should be a very good fight. You got Bahalo, who is somebody who just who likes to come forward, likes to take chances, and has been outstanding. Has been. Has I mean, been. he has really put on some great performances. So you look in, in my in in my opinion, he is a, a big favorite in this fight. He should be a big favorite in this fight. But what do you think happened with Magomedov? In his last fight against Sean Strickland. Now Sean's a champ, so it's not yeah, making his loss seem that bad anymore. No, look. He, but it looked you know, bad that night, though, John. He got beat by a better fighter that night. He got pressured. He got broke. That was a... That was a when you're, when hit, you're supposed to be fighting guys on. at the high level. When you get hit with shots that hurt yeah. you to the body, and then you get hit with shots that, you know what? You can't see coming because you, you're starting to cover too much. It's over. Yeah. That can happen to anybody, but you know, let's see how he comes back. But he's got a t- he's got a super tough opponent in Bahala. I, Kyle has Kyle has been just fantastic, mm-hmm. and he's he's impressed me with his stand up, with his ground game, with every bit. Right. And then there's no way in the world I don't think that he's the favorite and, and a big favorite in this fight. I guess we're gonna find out. Uh, yeah. The next fight, though, is a very good fight. Rodolfo Vieira versus Armand Petrosian. Well, Oof. you're looking. Pet- Petrosian's got the, the stand up game. He likes to be the kickboxer. He's worked on his takedown defense and keeping himself 
from either being taken down or he's very hard to take down. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that, look at Vera is, is who he is. You know, we've seen him how many times where we know how good he is on the ground. We know what his jujitsu is, but sometimes he works that he doesn't let the fight come and just relax in it. And he's trying to get rid of his opponent too fast and he burns energy and he just burns himself out. I'll give it the last fight he had. He looked fantastic. And I do think that he's going to get the win here. I think he's going to get it to the ground and he'll get the submission against Petrosian. You think so? I do. But we, you're, you're going like with Armin. No, no, no. I'm not going with Armin. Okay. Either. Okay. <laughs> All I know is with Hadolfo Vieira, I'm still on the fence about whether he should be a 205 pounder or an 85 pounder. Yeah, I'm, I'm not on the fence. I still think he should be a 205er. Yeah. When I look I at think him. He kills himself cutting the weight. When I look at him, he's great in the first round, maybe half of the second, depending on how much the first round went his way and how yeah. how much he can slow the first round down. Yeah. And then he carries over into the second. By the end of the second round, though, he's a shell of the fighter he was in the first. Oh, no doubt about it. There's no doubt. It's And so when you see those type of performances, and that's even after this 30-hour or 36-hour recovery time after weigh-ins, what does that tell you he's doing to his body? killing himself exactly i mean look look at guys like islam uh mahachev okay yeah. is that you take a look at him that extra six hours or eight hours that he didn't 12. get the first time yeah something like that it's he didn't get hours. against uh volk Made look at difference. the difference when you watched him walk into the cage the second fight you text me you said hey you're like said, damn oh. look at his body yep. i know you were checking him out i got it oh, yeah. but i said a little man crush there I was on the, I was right in the process of texting you. It, it, literally, I had to stop my texting and delete it because you had just said what I was saying. I said, yeah. "Look at him. You can see the striations in his body. You can see, like he's filled out. He's yep. full. Yep. In the first fight, shoulders he around. Flat. He yeah. looks good. There's no. He's not flat. Look at his face. Yep. Just the and whole in the, thing. And in the first fight, he looked flat. He looked smooth. He didn't yep. look. Shoulders weren't round. All those things. You know, it makes it, that makes a difference. With Vieira, he. Looks like he fills out, but the problem yeah. is, though, is that he, he just dumps out. everything. He burns out so fast. And uh, that might just be carrying way too much muscle for his body. There's that. And then on top of the weight cut, the two things just don't go hand in hand. So with Petrosian, though, he's not bad on the ground, though, either. He's not Adolfo Vieira level. But you got to remember, who was it? Was it Fluffy Hernandez who beat Adolfo Vieira? Yes, with the he, submission? Yes, he was did. Able to he choke submitted him. him. Yep. And if, if Armand's uh, Petrosian could end up making him work that much for the takedowns, and also don't be afraid to take him down uh, it, after you get a little sweaty, like three minutes in, three say, and a half minutes that in. That is not a good idea. <laughs> no, I get it. But if you can, if you, you know, like on top, Fluffy did some good work when he got on top yeah, of him. but Fluffy's got just, a good ground game. Yeah. Armand is not that. He does not have a ground game well, that it's Fluffy hard to, has. It, John, it's hard to submit Fluff. I mean, <laughs> Fluff is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's Fluff. It's all Fluff. He, but Petrosian, he, he though. Fluff. Yes, yeah, Petrosian though, like he's pro- Petrosian, yeah, Petrosian, yeah, Petrosian. Uh, yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad on the ground. He's not. He's got decent takedown uh, defense, but he's also got decent takedowns himself. I'm not saying he should jump right into the guard and round, you know, in one minute in the first round. Wait till you get a little sweat. Wait till he made Vieira work a little bit. Then let's just put our toe in the water. Let's test this shit out a little bit. See what happens. You know what John? happens when you put your toe in the water? Sometimes it burns, but guess something what? bites it off. Yeah. You, hey, did you see that video? There's a video online of this guy. He, I guess they're, they're, they're fishing in some river where they tell you sharks are here. Do not put your fucking feet or hands in the water. This fucking dumbass goes in to grab the fish that he's reeling in. Puts his, Oh, sorry. Not that he's reeling in. He already reeled the fish in. He puts his hands in the water to get him wet and wash him. Fucking shark comes up and takes his fingers. You're kidding. No. It was like that quick. <laughs> Kid just walked in, went to put his hands in the water. Didn't even, I don't even think he got his hands in the water. Fucking shark. Boom. Lemon shark. Came up. Boom. Snap. It's in the river, too, so there's fresh water. It's crazy. Insane. And I'm like, dude. It, they t- well, stupid. lemon sharks and bull sharks. Bull sharks. Live in brackish water and actually yeah. convert to fresh. Yeah. they have Actually, they found bull sharks up the river about 1,200 miles. Oh, yeah. uh, I want to say all the way up almost into um, into the Great Lakes, coming up through that way. That's crazy, John. That's crazy. There's no nowhere safe anymore. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. If, if it ain't the fucking shark, if it ain't the homeless people, it's the fucking sharks getting you. <laughs> Shit. 
All right, look, uh, that to me is going to be a great fight. But look, this is someone you know very well. Yep. Vince Michelle versus yep. Ismail Bonfim. The, the second Bonfim. Uh, mm -hmm. and look, he's a stud. The guy's good. Uh, he, he has his last fight. It was a loss, and it was to uh, Saint Denis, who I think is in. I mean, they were just talking about, hey, this guy's gonna. He's pushing to be in the welterweight picture, and he is. And Bonfim, when you're looking at him now, this fight, I'll tell you what, Pichelle has got a gas tank, and he is physically strong. I mean, does it? He looks it, but not the way that you think when you're when you're uh, looking at him. As far as it, the big difference that I'm seeing here, though, is Bonfim is dropping down in weight. Yeah, that's true. It might be better for him. And uh, I don't know. That's a big drop, one seventy to one fifty five. Yeah, that's a big drop. And so we're gonna see how he is. I think he, you know, the one thing is he's fast. Vince is not real fast. Mm -hmm. But Vince gets there, and Vince does not mind taking shots to give shots. And he will stand his ground, and his ground game is much better than people realize. Mm -hmm. Boy, everyone's going to sit here and say Bonfim is the better grappler. No, he's not. They're, they're even. Okay. You know, Pichelle can absolutely wrestle, and he can absolutely put submissions on you. His mm -hmm. ground game and his top game – he is outstanding at keeping you where he wants you to be. Look, look at what he did with Jim Miller. Yeah. You know what? Jim Miller won the first round of the fight that they had, and then Pichelle just kept grinding, and he ground Miller to the point where Miller was just done based upon he, he did nothing left. Yeah. So I look at I look at Bonfim as being I look at Bonfim as being somebody who he's gonna keep this thing on the feet. He's gonna yeah. sprawl and brawl, it's he's a better gonna chance stick and for move. Him. He, I think he's got the speed over uh, Pichel. He's going to just use the hands, quick hands, quick kicks. Can't stand directly in front of him. He's got to make sure he gets his head offline so he doesn't get caught with anything coming loopy or over the top. And just stick and move. Use the speed and his footwork to his advantage. Sprawl and brawl. And if you need to, don't worry about getting taken down. Worry about just not settling on the bottom. Yeah. If he does that, I think he's, I think Pichel's going to have a hard time holding him down. Coming down from the 170 mark into the lightweight division, we're going to find out if it's going to make a difference by by probably the first probably four minutes. After the first four minutes of the first round, you'll start seeing a difference. After the, especially after he gets up off that stool the first time That's and comes where, back into this in round two. And then, look, at, I'm, I'm being honest when I say this. I look at it and say, I think Bonfim, you know, he's the better athlete. He's the younger guy. He's He can put Pichelle away in the first round, we'll say. That's where, what he needs to do because if the mm -hmm. thing starts getting into the second round and he has worked hard, look out because the conditioning is going to start to take over and Pichel can just mm -hmm. absolutely carter you to death. Mm -hmm. So he, he mm -hmm. has got a big gas tank, big lungs, big heart, and dude, the guy is fearless as far as he'll take shots to, to give him because he, he believes that, you know what, I can stand up to what you're going you're gonna to put out and you can't stand up to mine. So yeah. we're going to see. should be a good fight. John, any other but fights Michelle on here? But is getting you... older. Yeah. yeah. He's still scrappy, though. Any other yep. fights on here you want to talk about? You know what? I, I don't have the list exactly. So oh, sorry. You're, you're going to have to read it Let me read them off, off to you. So you got, uh, I don't even know how you say this guy's name, Elves Brenner versus Esteban Rebofkis. Re mm. How do you say that? Rebofkis. I remember there was one, the one. Um... There's uh, Victor Hugo Silva versus Daniel Marcos. Okay. There is Dos Santos versus Renat Fakra. God, I can't even say his name. Fakra. Oh, Renat Fakradinov. Fakradinov. Oh, dude. He's that good. is the fight. No, no. This is the fight. This is a phenomenal fight. Okay. Why is okay. it so far down, John? I have no idea. But Zaleski is the guy that beat St. Denis. Mm -hmm. and was beat a, him to a pulp beat him to a pulp in in the united arab mm -hmm. emirates and fakradinov is a monster this should be a great fight i i, I don't know if mm -hmm. uh i don't know if Zaleski can get past renat but I, it should be just one of the best fights on the card as far as interesting both guys i i look forward to this one probably more than any of them Got it. And then you also got uh, Vitor Petrino, who's 9-0, versus Bukaskis, who's 15-5. Yep. 
Modestes Bukaskis. Not Bukaki. Okay, Bukaskis. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How many times has that poor man probably heard that? Keep line? it G-rated, buddy. Some of you guys don't know what Bukaki is. That. You guys go and look it up. Yeah. If you don't know what Bukaki is, go and look it up. Japanese, by good. the way. It's a Japanese term. Uh, we had we had a fighter who was from Japan who stayed with us, and he used to say that all the time to some some of the guys. <laughs> it was it was kind of fun. All right. Well, hey, that's gonna wrap up our UFC talk. Hope you guys enjoyed that uh, quick breakdown. And uh, go to onlyfans.com/slash weighing in. Onlyfans.com/slash weighing in. I've had some people uh, send me over some DMs. I haven't got to everyone's DMs. I'm trying to help help you guys get onto the platform. If you guys got some sort of um, expertise you would like to lend expertise. to the OnlyFans channel to create your own content there, potentially make a little extra money in cash, hit us up, hit me up in the DMs. I'll try to get you in contact with someone to help you guys create your own OnlyFans account at OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. They originally started off, John, as a sports idea it was supposed to be where athletes and sports people or people that just were creative chefs cooks all these people but that's that where we're bringing it back to yes you, i mean john, you can still you can still have the tail on the side i don't care. john here's the thing though here's the thing you know what's funny is someone sent me this thing uh, on instagram it was a it was a someone's profile and it was a female profile i was like oh wow i was like i think i know her then i was like no maybe i don't I didn't realize when I clicked on the link, I didn't realize when I was scrolling through her profile at the very top when I got done, I was like, I was like, wow, I goes, this is, this is pretty like, um, like she must be using a filter cause it looks like, it looks like her facial features look perfect. Okay. Then I scroll up to the top and it said AI influencer. Ooh. So she is now an A there's, there's, they're creating AI influencers. So they don't even have, real influencers anymore what are all these people going to do who are instagram influencers and youtube influencers they're going to be replaced by by ai people by cartoons by (laughs) cartoons yes by (laughs) cartoons john we this we are headed down a really strange i've told you i I don't like the whole AI. yeah drives me crazy Jeez, man! I just, I just want the thing that tells me all the answers the chat gpt or whatever it is i I do i do (laughs) want to say this I did read the comments this time. Oh, know, shit. And I was, I, I want to tell everyone that I uh, was wishing my father and giving prayers and stuff. Thank you so much to everyone. That is very kind of you. I do appreciate it. And it was all taken in with, man, loved all of it. Thank you so much. And on another note. Okay. I did read the comments also, but who would have thought, right? Me read the you comments. You read the comments? <laughs> Never. You I guys, can't say I read um, all of them, but I read let, a lot of them. Let me tell you, I need to pull my head out of my ass. Because <laughs> Sean Strickland obviously does oh, I have love that. a passport. <laughs> yeah. Homeboy Wait. just fought in fucking Australia. In Australia <laughs> for the championship. I know. And I was like, you know, when you were saying it, I was like, so what? So it I'm make telling sense you, to me, but I'm not going to say anything. Somebody had <laughs> texted me in Sean's camp and goes, he doesn't have a passport. I'm like, well, who the hell said that? I can't tell you that. I don't want to throw them on blast. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, all right, well, he doesn't have a passport. So they're like, so how is he going to go over to Russia? Maybe he can't get a visa then to go. To, maybe he can't uh, get a visa. To maybe, go to. maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Anyways, but someone's like, yeah, he's not, he's not fighting out of the country. I'm like, I'll fight well, out of the country. Yeah. Well, surprised. I'll tell you what. Did you, okay. Did you hear the little Sean Strickland thing about Bud Light? Yeah, I did. I thought it was oh, great. Oh, my God. He cried. Dave, you have that? It's, it's on our, it's have our so news. so much fun. It's on our news. With Sean Strickland. <laughs> we sent that to you like a couple of days back. It was pretty damn good. Oh, my God. It oh, was pretty a, damn cracking good. cracking me up. Oh, hey. man. It was great. Did you pull it up, Dave? I'm, I'm trying to find it right oh, now. Jeez, come on, Dave. Dave. Dave always ruining it. Uh, we were in the middle of talking, and back. I don't know if you saw that, John, but I had a call from uh, from BJ. BJ yeah. Penn, he was calling me. He's, yep. He's uh, he's he's doing everything he can to try to help uh, Lahaina get some extra cash and extra funding and stuff. God bless so, him for doing that. Yeah, he's he's on the ground. He's doing boots on the ground kind of thing. So guys, I'm on my way to this, and I just found out Bud Light's a new sponsor. And God damn, I applaud you guys. I am so fucking proud of you guys for doing the right things after that fuck up. <laughs> you know how I feel about transgenders. I go fucking hard. Just what I do. I'm the biggest advocate of biological females. If I said my views on transgenders, I would get kicked off Instagram. 
but I cannot fucking wait to pick up a big old fucking Bud Light can and fix you, Bud Light, because you guys are doing the right fucking thing. I, Sean Strickland, a representation of the American people, are going to fix you, Bud Light. Thank you for giving me money. Thank you for supporting my platform. I'm going to help you guys. <laughs> I love I just love him. I, Sean Strickland, support you, and I'm going to help you. If I was to think of like a a Chael P. Sonnen type you oh. know, endorsement deal, that's how I would imagine it sounding. Oh, that is just the fact that he put it out that way is because I am the biggest supporter of biological women. <laughs> so, oh, he's great. All right, yeah. let's go ahead and uh, jump right into one. One's got a, a show this weekend. Yes, they do. We've had uh, Rich Franklin on as of recently. We did an interview with him, so you guys can go back and check out his interview. And towards the end, we d- <clears throat> we spent some time on here talking about the fight card, yep. and uh, he gives you full breakdowns on who is what and how good they are. So you guys can go back and take a look at uh, what he said, and that was kind of towards the end of the interview. <clears throat> But there's a lot of extra good content in there as well that we talked about. We actually didn't even get to some of the stuff I wanted to talk about. Right. Was I wanted to talk about uh, Angela Lee retiring. That's because Rich can talk. He can. He know. can. And he talks well. He, he does. <laughs> he does. Um, working with him was awesome, by He's, the way. He was one of the nicest guys and made it so easy for me to make the transition over you know, to, to a company that basically... 98% of the people, maybe even 99% of the people that work for one um, are from Asia, you know, whether it's Singapore, whether it's uh, <clears throat> mainland Asia or Kuala Lumpur or wherever he, um, but he made it real easy for me to, to come in and really kind of get adjusted. It was great. It was awesome. <coughs> Sorry guys. Dying. Yeah. <coughs> got, went swallowed down the wrong, wrong pipe. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Breathing and, and talking. Go. It's a tough mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. It's a tough one. Jonathan Haggerty versus Fabricio Andrade. Yeah, it's a great look at it's a great fight. And then the real difference, and I think Rich kind of brought this up. You know, Haggerty is a dynamite kickboxer. <clears throat> he's a great Muay Thai guy and he throws elbows in a in a fashion that most guys don't. He throws a linear elbow straight forward. He steps in and brings his arm up as he's doing it, and he's incredibly effective with it. But under these rules, is he allowed to do those same things? That's my one question I forgot to ask. Yeah. Because this is a kickboxing, not a Muay Thai fight. And many times in kickboxing, they don't allow elbows. So I don't know if that is allowed. His opponent is a has got just a great skill set. He, you know, We watched him against Lineker. He ate John Lineker up. He took big shots from Lineker and just pieced him up with just beautiful technique. So I think it's going to be a fantastic match to watch. The real question is, does Haggerty get to use the same elbow attacks that he's so good with? Because I think if he doesn't, if he gets to use those, he's got a very good chance to win this fight. If he doesn't, I see it as a difference maker, and I see that he's going to have a hard time. Yeah, I would agree with you 100%. I think... Um... I think Andrade, though, he's just got that dog in him. He's good. And Haggerty's used to being more of a technician, someone that can kind of pick you apart, exploit your weaknesses, whereas Andrade is someone who is, he will bite down the mouthpiece he's a and get after you. He's a yeah. banger. He will take your shot, give you a shot, and uh, he'll do it smiling. And so we're going to find out uh, how much <laughs> grit Haggerty has in him in this fight because I think Andrade is going to come forward and press, and press the action. And take no prisoner. Uh, you know, one of my favorite <clears throat> jujitsu, uh, not just one, but a couple of them, but <clears throat> Ty, Ty Ruotolo, him and his brother Cade, both of them are just really good, good kids. And I call them kids because yeah. they are extremely young. Young men. They're, yes, young men. There you go. <clears throat> but they have their goals. Them. They have their goals and their priorities. <laughs> they have their goals and their priorities. Um, on track, they just opened up their their facility in Costa Rica with their own money, spent their own time um, doing their own thing and doing and built up their own gym that's out there now open for business. So I wish them nothing but the best on uh, everything they do. <clears throat> that being said, 
it's hard to continue to keep growing when you own your own gym. John, we know this. You and I both. Uh, unfortunately, we know. Um, it's very difficult. Yeah, These guys, now look, if they're looking keep at the doors take, open. <clears throat> if they're looking to continue the role of what guys like Hoffa and Guillermo are doing, two brothers, and I think the two of them, they have a very good chance of doing something very similar that AOJ does, which is uh, Hoffa and Guillermo, uh, they can really roll in and do the same thing. And also, it's a tour site. So they'll get a lot of people to come out, they train jujitsu, and and um, you know, and spend two week long camps there, there. week long camps there. You so got, what you, got, you go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, what I'm I've you, noticed in some of these places, John. Sorry, what I've noticed in some of these places, uh, Mike Swick was one of the first guys to kind of corner that market with the uh, with the with the Thailand, aka, AKA Thailand. Thailand. Yeah, he's got a cold plunge set up. He's got sauna set up. He's got. Um, Ladder set up. He's got basketball court set up. He's making it a resort. Literally, he's, you can walk across the street. He's got confidence courses and ninja warrior stuff exactly. going. Exactly. <laughs> and right across the street, you know, because one of our ring girls, uh, Louise, Louise, Mickey, she, she was out there for about a month training at, at AKA Thailand. And she's like, look, I literally stayed across the street. Uh, I would walk there every day and walk right back. She's like, and for the month, it cost me like 40 bucks for the hotel. For the month. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's pretty damn. She's like, the most expensive thing was my air flare, for sure. <clears throat> Everything else was extremely cheap. The food's really good, all these things. You know, so when I look at what Ty's doing, Ty and Kate both doing over in Costa Rica, congratulations to you guys on that. But, man, he's got his hands full with Mohammed. I don't even know how you say his name, Abdul Kadarov. <laughs> Abdul Kadarov, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Kadarov is more of a just a like someone who Sambo is stylist. Sambo style, aggressive, will not be afraid of leg locks, will not be afraid of the ankle locks. He will um, <clears throat> try to smash and, and control the top position. He will not be afraid in the scrambles, in the transitions of throwing hip tosses, foot sweeps, in the clinch. I would look for Ty to probably start trying to jump guard, or maybe threaten the takedown, press him in the fence. But we know this, though, John, both of you and I both know this. And we saw it when we saw um, uh, Jessica uh, uh, Jessica Jessica Khan when yeah. she fought uh, Alyssa. Was it Alyssa? Uh, oh, no, it was. Who um, did she fight? God. Damn. Well, anyways, in that fight, I want to say Nikki, but no, it's not Nikki. Nikki. No, <clears throat> I want to say, is it? I can't Alyssa? remember about that. I think it's Alyssa or Allison. Anyways. She took her down and pressed her to the fence and took away all the threats of submissions against Jessica. And I think it's I think it is Allison. Is it Allison? Jessica, yeah, Jessica. Who did she face? Who was her last two? Who is it? Nothing. It wasn't it? No, no, was no, no. It was it was it was jujitsu. It was like a it was a Kyle. grappling match in in one. <clears throat> yeah, it was a grappling. Anyways. In that, she took her to the fence, controlled her, pressed her against the fence, stood over her, pinched the knees tight, all of those things. When I look at what, what Ty knows how to do, um, that is one of them. He will be able to press his opponent against the fence, control that top position. He's been there. He's done that. Not that his opponent hasn't been in a cage. It's just <clears throat> the type of control that Ty has, I think it's going to pose a problem for him in this. For his opponent. She fought Daniel. She fought Daniel Kelly. Daniel Kelly. Jesus, Daniel where the Kelly. hell did I get Allison at? Jesus, Josh. <laughs> Josh Thompson. Get okay, I said Nikki. <laughs> oh, man. Can't remember all of them. It's impossible. No, it's, man, people don't realize. Everyone's like, it's so funny. I'm like, you guys can't even pronounce these guys' names. Okay, you guys realize, a lot of you guys just watch the UFC. We watch one. We watch the UFC. We watch Bellator. PFL. We watch PFL. We watch. Sometimes we even watch uh, ACA, and sometimes we even watch some of the smaller shows, yeah. uh, LFA. LFA. Yeah, like we have to do research on a lot of these fighters, you know, for Bellator as well. The guys that are coming in. There's a ton of fights. Yes. We spend a lot of time just watching fights. So, if, pardon me if I don't get the. And most of the time, I'm watching it without the commentary on. <laughs> well, John, you know what? Some of it is is that. You real you think you know that name, and it's not the guy you're thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, shit, is that True. the guy that I saw fight that last? No, it wasn't. Damn it. <laughs> so, all right, what else? Uh, what else we got on here? Well, well, well on on this car- yeah on, on this, this card. card or- okay. <clears throat> no, I think the, the big the big the grappling match that you you were talking about with Ty. Yep. His abilities on the ground. He. <laughs> You look at there. There's usually two types. 
you get guys that are that are movers that are real elusive in the way they move and guys that are crushers ty rilatola does both he puts a ton of pressure on guys but he slides in and moves to different positions incredibly well it's what he and his brother both do and so he's a monster on the mat it's just you yeah. gotta the real question is that the last time we watched him we watched him against de ritter mm-hmm. much bigger fighter much bigger you know and, and an mma guy a guy that tried to stifle everything that he could do by keeping the fight standing. If you remember way, remember way back when Meta Morris was going and Brendan Schaub was brought in and he went against Cyborg. Mm. And <clears throat> Cyborg had a hard time taking him down. And that's all Brendan did was defend, defend, defend. But you're there, you go, that's not what you're there for. Well, no shit. Look at fucking grapple. how big Brennan Schaub is compared to Cyborg. <laughs> well, no, well, I'm not talking. It was, it was um, Cyborg from Florida. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, okay. Different Cyborg. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah both, both big guys. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But it still couldn't take him down. But you look and go, and that's what happened in the DeRitter, <clears throat> Ty Rotola fight. You look and go, that's not what grappling's about. I mean, yeah, we have UFC Fight Night in Austin that was just announced, John. I just saw yeah. the uh, Dana White just talking about it, and I got to be honest. Now that I live so close to Austin, I might actually try to go to this fight live. Ooh, this is maybe maybe Dana will give you a ticket. <clears throat> Fucking last time I asked Dana for tickets, right? I got the second to last row. At the <laughs> he, very he Vince McMahon you. <clears throat> he fucking he pulled did the me Vince dirty. McMahon on you, man. <laughs> he did me dirty. You know what's funny? And then I had to, I had to kind of go behind his back to somebody that worked for him and get fucking seats lower. And I could tell that when he saw me down that low, he was trying to figure out who got got me those tickets. He was not happy. He just looked, and I saw him look directly at me, and then he yeah. looked He looked around the cage to see if someone was looking at me or talking to me or whatever. And then he went over to someone, and he just he looked at him. He was talking to him and looked at me and talked back at him. And, uh, yeah, I never asked for tickets again from any. I didn't want to get my friends in trouble that were working for them. <clears throat> but uh, my friend is still working for them, so who knows? <laughs> but, it's, uh, yeah. It's so funny that you... <sighs> For a while, you remember the credentials you'd get? I, I have yeah. them, when when I'm at home. You see them all in the mm-hmm. the chair that I have in the back. You know, and yep. you, it's that you know big time you know placard mm-hmm. card thing and everything. And I used to give my those when I when I had them. If there was a kid at the fights, I would always give it to that kid and let them have mm-hmm. it. Because you know, afterwards or during? Well, usually during. You know. It was right, right near the end, you know, near the main event. I would take and mm-hmm. give it to a kid, and it was like, "Hey, man, let them have that." It's a like a cool thing for them to have. And I got in trouble for it because of Stitch. Well, the only reason mm-hmm. I got in trouble for it is Stitch was giving it to his his to his friends so they could get into the mm-hmm. fucking fight, right? And then they found out. They said, "John, you know, John, we heard you're, you're handing it out to people." I go, "Yeah, I give it to a kid." You can't do that. You can't do that, right? And I got Dana was like, "You can't give the, you can't give those away. You don't realize those, those are." I go, "I do realize what it is," and I'm trying to make somebody want to come back. <clears throat> he goes, let "No, me, don't give those out." So let me tell trouble. you a story. On it. Do you know why they don't have those anymore? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so go ahead. You, you can tell the, it though. I'm not going to say the guy's name. Okay, <clears throat> but there is a manager, or used to be a manager, um, <laughs> who used to get them. Because he was a manager and his fighters would get them. And then he would take them to the local printing shop and make a bunch of them. Yes. Like, I'm not talking about just one or two. He no, would no. make a hundred of them. Yes. <laughs> and he would hand them out to everyone that he wanted to get into the fights. Yep. And after that, they found out that manager is no... I don't even know if he's managing anybody anymore. If well, he is, he's like... <clears throat> not managing anybody in the UFC. No. <clears throat> because if you had him as a manager, you either decided... You're leaving the UFC, or you're leaving him. <laughs> yeah, you had to you had to choose. Uh, I don't. Yeah, bl- that was. Look, I don't blame them for that no, at all because that man was stealing from them. Yeah. Yep. You know? I mean, let, let me let me give you guys a little backstory on Scott Coker. <clears throat> oh. Scott Coker, when it comes to tickets, his his thought process on it is like, if I give you tickets, I'm stealing from the company. That's the way he looks at it. That's the way he looks at it. I mean, yeah. and in some reality, it's true. Yeah. So, like, every fighter got two tickets. That was in your contract. You know, some some fighters got four. You know, if you're fighting for a title or you're the co-main event, uh, you get four. But outside of that, 
it was very hard pressed to get more than the the two to four tickets. And after going back to the UFC after you know early in my career, we got you know four tickets. Sometimes I could weasel, weasel out another four tickets out of Dana, no problem. And it was like, hey, just can I have a couple more tickets? He's like, yeah, sure. I mean, you need. That's back then, back from two thousand. 2001 yeah. to 2004. The UFC used to be really good about. <clears throat> yeah, need tickets. Let's let's get you some tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it yeah. to a minimum. Okay. Yeah, let's not yeah. let's not go getting everybody in their dog. But now, when I went back there in what 2012, 2013, it was two. That's it. That's all you got. <clears throat> and it went yeah. from two hotel rooms to, to one. one to one for you and your corner. So if you thought you were bringing your girl and you're going to sleep in the same room as your girl and then you your corners, you could think again. No. You could. No, no. no yes, you Come could. On. Yeah, no, you could. You could. You could. Just put your yeah, girl you with you in the corner on the ground. There you go. Well, you know, uh, Javier Mendez, he had like uh, he had sleep apnea. And so he <laughs> snored like a motherfucker. And there was a there was a video that uh, a buddy of ours did. <clears throat> And we showed that, I didn't show, he showed that video to Javier. And he didn't realize, Javier tells the story, tell, he tells the story all the time. How he goes, bad he snored. How bad he snored. He's like, I don't, he's like, I snore, I'm sure I snore a little bit, but it's not that bad. <clears throat> so the guy took the video, walking down the hall at a, at a, at a casino in the hotel. Yeah, hearing walking it Walking down the, the hall, and you could hear it through the door, four to five doors down. Damn. You could hear it. And as you got all the way down, we had, he had a key to his room. He opened the door and walked in and zoomed all the way into Javier. You could hear it. <laughs> it wasn't until that moment that Javier realized that he snored. It wasn't until that moment. So Javier, after that, every time, any time a fighter, one of his fighters fought in Vegas, he always got his own room. Yeah. <clears throat> He'd go out of his way to buy his Smart. own room or get his own room because he's like, Smart. I didn't realize that it was that bad. Yeah. <clears throat> but now he uses a machine and now he sleeps just fine. You know, for a while he was he was dragging ass, man. He just and I don't think anyone can wrap their head around the fact that like he just when you're not getting any sleep, you yep. just don't feel like doing shit all That's day. True. And once he got on the machine, his activity changed a lot. <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't say he was out there running marathons or anything, but he was. <laughs> I don't know, think Javier can <laughs> run a marathon now. <laughs> no, you know what's crazy is. He was pretty fast. You know, when I was running yeah. my sprints at the track, he'd be out there running with me. Every once in a while, he'd run with me, and he wasn't slow. He wasn't slow. And, he, and I know he could, I knew he could run. <clears throat> He's Mexican. You know, and us Mexicans, we can run. And so that's one thing we could do. And he just, uh. you know, he just tried to go too hard, too fast all the time. Anyways, all right, we got off topic, but let's go ahead and get right into this uh, UFC fight night, which is awesome, Texas. Real quick. Let's go. Yeah, look, your main fight is Benil Dariush against Armin Sarukian. This is a great matchup. This is a matchup that you look at and you go, Sarukian has got fantastic <clears throat> wrestling. He's got good stand-up. It's that Dariush is he's different. He's a, he's, a, he's a hard person to match up against. He does things in an awkward fashion, and Sarukian's going to have to figure it out. But it's going to be a, just a great main event. John. Yeah. Let me ask you what you think the difference is between Benil Dariush and when he fought Matisse Gamrot. What is the difference between that fight and this fight? Because Gamrot lost to Benil Dariush, and Dariush made it look easy. Yeah. Sarukian lost to Gamrot, and they Sarukian's are very a similar lot better fighters. on the feet than Gamrot. <clears throat> I agree. Gamrot does not like to be in the stand-up long. Sarukian will be there. That's a, that's a difference maker in this fight. I don't know, man. I do. This this is what I think is the difference maker in this Go ahead. Fight. When Benil Dariush fought Gamrot, he was on the way up. Yep. He's now lost. And I'm not saying he's lost all of his confidence. I'm saying no. that he doesn't have the same confidence he had when he beat Gamrot. He looked like the confidence. He looked like he exuded confidence when he was in that kid. He was just fucking yeah. was brimming and pouring out of him yeah. when he fought uh, Gamrot. Yep. The things he did to Gamrot, like in terms of just the scrambles and and the the ability just to get to the top position, get takedowns, control position. I was like, holy shit, yeah. who this this guy's making it look easy right now. I look at Sarukian too on a on a you know a, a good little run also, but his loss to Gamrot set him back a little bit. But now he's on the he's on the one going up, 
And D- Darius going, man, <clears throat> I definitely didn't look good against um, against a uh, uh, former champ. Uh, Oliveira. Jeez, Josh. Come on, Josh. Oliveira. I definitely didn't look good against Oliveira. That wasn't my best me. I've got to figure out what went wrong. Because you know what, you John, you know this. We worked so hard to get to the top. Yeah. And you're, you're thinking like n- n- nothing, nothing's going wrong for you. Yeah. Then when you lose that first one, you're like, wait, someone's figured me out. I, I've got to change my whole game. I've got to figure it all out. That doesn't mean you got to change it for Sarukian, but you're gonna have to change it if you want to win the title. You have to make some adjustments. Not change the whole game, but you got to make some adjustments. Yeah. Where like, I want to know what adjustments Benil Darius got to make though for a Sarukian fight because he's already fought Gamera and they're very similar. They are similar in the wrestling. <laughs> They're not similar in the stand-up. Sarukian is much more comfortable with his stand-up game than I believe Gamera is. And it's not, okay. not that Gamera can't be in a stand-up, but he's just not as comfortable. Sarukian mm-hmm. will stand there and bang with just about anybody, but he'll use his wrestling when he gets the opportunity. Now, look, <clears throat> Benil, I love him, man. I've known him forever, and like I said, awkward, creates different angles that, in ways that is not the norm, and so it's it takes a completely it takes you out of your 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 normal game that you like to play. It, it makes you hesitate, and I'm not sure that Armin is old enough to hesitate. <laughs> this is true. I'm being honest. Look at there, explain I, that. Explain that to people because people don't understand. The age makes a big difference on what huge you do difference. in that cage. Huge explain difference. People, explain it to people. Well, because, let's let's be honest. Benil's 34. I believe he's 34. Armand is now 26 Five. or tw- 27. Okay. 26, I think. I think. Tw- I think he's 25, John. Is he 25? So yeah. Yeah, see, it, he is. that right there, he, he has a, a confidence in his ability to do whatever he wants when he wants, and it doesn't matter to him what his opponent does because this is what I do, and I'm going to force it on you because I can do that, and I have the gas tank for it. And all the things that we talk about, Benil is right at that moment that it's starting to change. Mm -hmm. And he has to, you know, figure out how I train a little bit different. The injuries that I've had, all these things I need to... Sarukian doesn't have to deal with any of those. All Sarukian does is fight, train, and figure out if he didn't have a good performance or something he wasn't doing the right way, I go back and I'm going to fix it now. And he goes back and he listens to his coaches and then, we're good, let's go. Yeah. It's a different mindset. And that yep. mindset and being that Sarukin is younger, it can, it can have a difference in this. It, sometimes it can work to the advantage of the veteran fighter, which Benil is. In this situation, I'm not too sure that it's going to be an advantage for Benil. Gotcha. The fight that I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to that, that main event as well, is Dan Hooker and Bobby Green. Oh, we had Bobby God, Green yeah. on here just shortly, what, just a couple weeks back, two weeks ago? Yep. We had him on, and uh, he was talking about, hey, you know, Dan's been talking. Let's go. Let's, yeah. let's chalk that's, it up. That's a fight that interests me. Yep. That means that Bobby's going to have to stop smoking. That's what it means. <laughs> Bobby's going to have to dial back on the smoke a little bit. not going to happen. And Dan Hooker is, in, in his last fight, just just showed the grit. The well, grit that he's, he's always had it. He's always had it. But he, yeah. if, you're gonna, fight, if you're going to look at Dan Hooker, Go back and watch Dustin Poirier and Dan Hooker. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. That fight told me everything that I needed to know about who Dan Hooker is, what he is as a fighter, what's inside. He's got no fucking quit. Can he be beat? Sure. Anybody can be beat. But he's got no quit. The dude is just a gamer, and he keeps coming. And so that's a great fight between the two. You look at the Poirier fight, and I look at that fight, and I go – that fight to me was like, yeah, showed that he's got grit. He can keep coming against the highest level. I got that part. But in his last fight, he got his ass kicked for five minutes fucking straight. It was nasty. It was one of the worst beatings I've seen outside of Josh Thompson, Tony Ferguson round two. Okay, that's how fucking bad it was. This guy, I got to be honest, man. This guy, in that last fight, he yeah. figured it out in the second round and then went on oh, in the yeah. third and just fucking turned it on. Yeah. I, I got to be honest, man. I was like, oh, I kind of like Dan Hooker from before with, from the Poirier fight. But that fight right there, psh, I'm automatically a fan for life. Fan for automatically life. a fan for life. 
But, you know, he's facing my boy Bobby Green, who's been on the show. And, uh, you know, we and I fought him. I shared the cage with him a little bit. You know, and uh, I, got, I got a root for Bobby. But I love this fight. I think it's a great fight. It is a great fight. It's kind of funny because Jalen and Bobby kind of circle around each other mm -hmm. a little bit, that being his last opponent. But they fight completely different as far as yeah. you know, just the length and style and what they do. But Bobby Green can get away with a lot of things because of his speed, and he is faster than Dan Hooker. No doubt in my mind that he's faster than him. He's not as long as him, but Bobby's riding a, a nice little win streak. You know, Obviously, Dan got that win against Jalen Turner that you're talking about that impressed you so much. I just look at the fight with Poirier as I know how good yeah. Dustin Poirier is, and I know the mindset of a Dustin Poirier. And to stay in there against a guy when he's – He's coming on like that and not yeah. give in. God damn. Tells well, me to, touch, to touch back on what you're saying, Dan Hooker's got to take a page out of Drew Dover's book, though, when he fought Bobby Green and do what he did in the third round of his last fight. Yeah. He's got to bite down and cut, cut the cage off, pressure Bobby to the fence, put his back against the fence so he's square against the fence. Now it takes away his movement side to side, and then you're able, more likely to be able to touch him against the fence. Yeah. And Dan being the longer fighter, Seems like he'd be the longer fighter because he is a lot taller. But we never know. Bobby's, I, I'm not sure if Bobby's got a long reach. He seems like he did when I fought him. He seemed like he could hit me from, from distance, but I wasn't sure <laughs> if he's just, he was faster than me or he had longer reach. Yeah. But that's a great fight. <clears throat> Who's got the long reach? five rounds too, right? Huh? Yeah, see, reach right there, five 75, 71. Okay, let's go to the co or not co but let's go to the next fight. Next fight is Sean Brady versus Kelvin Gastelum. God great damn, fight that's a great well. fight. Great that is fight. A great, yeah, absolutely. Sean Brady's a stud, man, and he's got a gas tank. So does Kelvin. People don't give Kelvin enough credit for the, you know, again, he's my Roberto Duran of the MMA world. I love him. He's got great stand-up. He's tough as hell. He's, he's getting smarter with his stand-up as he's getting older, which you need to. He d still has a good grappling game. His, his wrestling is solid, you know, and so I just look at this, man, and it's like, look, Brady is – He's a beast. And, you know, Sean Brady went with Craig Jones on the ground mm -hmm. and won. Now, it wasn't an exciting match. I'm not saying that, no. oh, he dominated Craig Jones. He beat him, though. Okay? To beat Craig Jones in a grappling match, yeah. you got to have something. You got to have yeah. something. Let's just be honest. So, on the ground, if Sean Brady can get the fight there and be in the top position, he's going to give Kelvin trouble. Okay? In the stand-up. They match up very well. They're both they both have a brawling style, and the one thing I'm saying, they both have a gas tank. Both of these guys get in shape, and we're going to see what the the cut to 170 mm -hmm. does that affect the gas tank that Kelvin Gastelum has had. Yeah, we're going to find out. Sean obviously needs to get this fight to the ground, and it doesn't mean he can't stand with Kelvin Gastelum, but Kelvin, I think, has got the faster twitch and better combinations on the feet. He's more relaxed on the feet. More relaxed. I'll give him that. Sean, yeah, Sean is someone who's a little bit too tense on the feet. Tense, he does tend to slow down and get a little bit more fatigued on the feet yeah. than he would if it was on the ground where he can control you, be able to work his positioning, and put some fucking beat down on you from the top position. The Rob Font, Div Devison Figueroa. Yeah, Devison Figueredo and Rob Font. Good fight. Devison coming up to 135. Rob just kind of find a groove and a stride right now. Let's see if he can get back on track in terms of... Oh, oh. You're going to go past your girl, Misha Tate? I love Misha. I love her. <laughs> I just... I, you know, I don't know what to say. Uh, Julia Vila and Misha Tate. Look, I got a little crush, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's cool, man. Her. Just... Uh, it's a... It's a I'm just want, I want to know like where she at kind of in her career. Is she doing this? She does she obviously it, it seems like cuz I follow her on social. And we'll we'll message each other back and forth. She's she seems like she's loving the ride right now. Yeah. She's loving the idea uh not, not loving the idea. She's loving just being able to train. Just do what she what she loves. There's no pressure. She's not feeling any pressure right now. Yeah. I mean outside of like look, of course everyone wants to win, but the pressure she had before was to win the title. She did that, and she got she she did it against someone who, you know, was the champ. Like, just understands how good Holly Holm was, and she ah, beat her the way you know she I mean? beat her. <clears throat> yeah, special you moment. Know, yeah, very very special. Once that's I think lifted off your shoulders, you can go out there and have fun. 
And I think in the other fight, you know, defending her title and so on, she wasn't out there having fun. I think she felt the pressure of having to keep and retain the title. And then when she took the time off and you know, now coming back, going, look, I still have a lot left in the tank. At least I want, I enjoy training. I love being back in the in the uh, in the room with uh, all the other females that are all new, young, you know, and just kind of playing mentor, but also realizing I can hang with them. That's why we're seeing her back. She's enjoying this moment. I'm good. I'm happy for her. Yeah. I think it's great. If this is what you want to do and you're 100% mm -hmm. in, then it's what you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, Next fight, Rob Font and Devison Figueredo. <sighs> That's a great fight. And, uh, you know, we talked about this one before when they mentioned it and they said it was being put together. I think Rob, I think this is a great fight for Rob Font. I think Rob Font has proven that, you know what, his ground game is not bad. If the yeah. people were going to talk about him and say anything about Rob Font, Oh, you know, he's average on the ground. Well, I've seen him go against guys that I would tell you are really good on the ground, and he's held his own there. He's done very well. So yeah. he is schooled on the ground. And, man, his stand-up, he has got great stand-up. And he's got a gas tank, and the dude's tough as hell. And I've all I can do is I know Devison Figueredo is a former champion, and he's good. But Rob Font's got the style that gives him trouble. Mm -hmm. And I just think that Rob's going to be the, the 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 better man in this fight. Yeah, we're going to see. I think Figueredo. We're going to see uh, this fight going into you know late in middle of the round two into round three. Him having to push on the takedowns. Him having to utilize that the the strength to try to get this fight to the ground. Him having to really get into the grappling and the wrestling to get this fight to the ground. Because on the feet, Rob, I think he's going to touch him up a little bit. Yep. He's a little bit too accurate, a little bit too on point, all of those things. Clay Guida versus Silva, uh, Joaquin Silva. Good fight, but I think the speed of Silva is going to be a factor. Gonna Clay get slowing Clay's down, Clay yeah. getting older. You know, the physical strength also of Silva you know, I think I think Clay look, Clay's done a lot in his career. Just you're dealing with someone who's who's younger and a little bit more faster, faster and more explosive. Right and so, yeah, when you try to take get the fight to the point where you you're trying to get it, you just don't have that explosiveness yeah. to get into them the way the the shots just don't come as as fast, and so they can read them better. It's tough. This is what happens when you get older. Clay Guida has been an incredible fighter. First, I, you know, I love him as as not only as a fighter, as a person. Clay's one of my favorite guys. He's just, he is absolutely a great guy to be around. And even you will say that now. Yeah, he's grown <laughs> on me a lot as we've gotten older. I've realized, you know, it's not its not good to hold grudges. And uh, we've had a great talk in San Jose, uh, one of the Bellator events, and it was great to have him there. Uh, super, super nice guy. <clears throat> great conversation. But do look at, I wanted to say this, is that Dana was pretty pissed off at him, I believe, in his last fight because yes, he, he faked. Uh, he fake. I feel like this is a to get back at you moment. I it might be. Look, this is the honest. first time Dana guys like uh, Joe Silva have done this before. Yeah, yeah. You do something like that and it pisses you be. off, and he came out publicly how mad he was about it. He was well. Clay lost his last fight, but kind of took his gloves off like he was in that. And they were they put him on the mic, and it was so he could say happy birthday to his mom. Wow. So. Yeah, Dana was mad. He and okay, rightfully so. If you know, if he thought he was retiring, and uh, you know, but if Clay didn't tell you he was retiring, you mm -hmm. never know. Yeah, never this is know. the fight that I think Dana White was talking about very highly of Khalil Roundtree Jr. versus Ozma oh. Mirzakhanov. Mirzakhanov, <laughs> can you say that again? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> I was just gonna say Ozma. 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 Ozma go, versus Khalil. Great Two bruisers. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be Both good. Both guys come at you. Both guys have heavy you know, power. That's a, that's a going to be a – someone's, someone's going to go to sleep. Or someone's going to end up more. on the ground. Yeah, so I think someone's going to get knocked out. Yeah. That's the someone's going to put to sleep. Scroll up a little bit more there, Dave. Is that it? Is that all of it? Let's see what else we're looking at here. Jakar Close, Joe Selecki, Steve Garcia – Dum dum dum. Yep, I think it's gonna pretty much wrap it's up a great our card. card. It is a really good card. Look for for a town like Austin. I'll be honest, it's not a fight town. Nope. And they and we know this. We've done business. I've done business there. It's not me personally. Strike Force did business there. Didn't do well. Yeah. Bellator did business there. Didn't do well. Yeah. UFC's gone there a couple times. Didn't do well. Now I do know they did last time they were there. They did well. They did well. Now, yeah. I don't know how well that was or how much that was because 
Guess who lives there now? Mr. Joe Rogan. Mr. And Joe. when Mr. Joe Rogan lives there, Joe Rogan comes with the herd, baby. He it, brings baby. people with him. And so, I, yeah, I, I really do believe that it's going to do well. But a lot of that has to do with not just the UFC. Rogan does a very good job of pumping them. Uh, especially when it's local. Always he's got now he's got his uh comedy store yeah. called the Mothership. the Mothership. Gosh, I'm looking forward to going down there. Uh Dave and I are gonna be hanging out, I think probably in about two weeks or so, Dave, I think is what I was telling you. That's what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, I think about two weeks. So we may have to hit hit that hit that up. Come down maybe a day early. So I'll be down there for the weekend on that and maybe we could try to uh one check of my out sis- the mothership. One of my sisters was just there. She said it was great. She had a blast oh, there. So I'm excited. I'm excited to check it out. So we're going to head down to the mothership and then um, also, too, I think we're going to, when is this? December 2nd? So, uh, yep, yep. December 2nd. So, the, uh, yeah, so this card will be held December 2nd in Austin, Texas. So, if you guys are in the neighborhood and you guys want to swing on through, you guys going to be at the card, hit, hit, hit a brother up, and I might be down there, too. So, check it all out. We'll see what check happens. It out. Check Anyways, it out. all right. Well, hey, guys. Uh, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. John, do you have time for anything else, or are we going to wrap this up? I got time for anything. You, I don't Let's know, go. buddy. You've had a long come, day. You've come had a long on, day. baby. We're good. You know, it, it, almost 80 years old. i got to be careful how much I burn you on both ends. That's true. You All can right. see the grace finally coming in. 80. <laughs> Shit, that ain't just, Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> John, that's not even... It's, I used to have a little patch. Now Man, it's I'll like a whole, you, whole side of my face. The best the part hell? is, you know what? See, because I, I have people all the time say, you know, like, you know, does he dye his hair? Shut up. Do I dye my hair? If I dyed my hair, you would be able to tell. I got gray hair throughout it. But yeah. it ain't going to be as gray as yours. No, it's not. John, <laughs> it's already not. Like, I have I have patches. Look at like, get there. Patches <laughs> of gray. I got patches. Like, pa- like, right there. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. You man. know? But the gray part is when. It's the gray maturity. The part is when my daughter says, hey, Papa, you have glitter in your hair. You glitter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's not glitter. Yeah. It's not glitter. It's glitter. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull up some news. What do you got for us, Dave? I sent over All right. something. Go ahead. Yeah, the last one I got here is PFL's uh, uh, founder Don Davis mm-hmm. saying that Nate is stuck in a fight um, that he's been offered in MMA against Jake Paul in the PFL <clears throat> for between an offer between ten and fifteen million. Okay, did you uh, pull up the? Um, did you can you pull up the? Uh, the thing I sent you also too with Chael. I think Chael did a little thing real quick on the Francis and Ganu and the money thing. Because that, that that goes with this. So if you can just kind of follow along. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. So he's gonna. So <clears throat> Chael did this thing where he talks about what the money was offered by the UFC. He also does what the money what the money he made when he fought Tyson Fury. But people, I guess. I'm not sure people have really un- really understand. No, they don't. They don't get it. No. Like, and, and Chael kind of brought a good... And Chael misses on a lot of things. Like, he actually misses on the name. <laughs> but <laughs> this is Chael. And you got to love Chael for it. But, uh, but yeah, this is so great. The, the, he, you, you ready for yeah, it? Yeah, let's go. Can you make sure the volume's up? I want to praise Francis today, but I do want the story told correctly. I think that he beat Fury. I think that he exceeded expectations. I think that he deserves a lot of credit. But I've already seen the story mistold, that he played this one and didn't fumble the bag. Well, if the bag is a bag full of money, yes, he did. He absolutely, to make believe that $10 million is somehow significantly more than he would have got on his pay-per-view participation alone against John Jones is incorrect. Not to mention the two years that he sat equals six fights. Let's bring it back and call it five. It's like making it really easy. Let's call it four fights. His four fights would have equaled more than 10 million had he promoted them. I mean, you, you got to really understand this. It's not the way that people keep saying that it is. I don't know what he's got in MMA. I don't know who is out there for him. I know the two leading candidates to be his next MMA opponent are between Junior Dos Santos and Fabiano uh, Verdum. <laughs> Fabiano, Fabiano Verdum. Huh? Nobody's clamoring to see that fight. Meanwhile, if I told you that Francis is going to Good return to boxing, he's going to take on Deontay Wilder, you will stop what you're doing, and you will mark that on your calendar. So let's see where he goes. I do want to praise him, but I praise him in the spirit of, let's tell the story accurately in the way that it happened. Yeah. Well, look, what he's pointing out, what people have to, and John, you – Tell me if I'm off. If I'm off here, right. he's pointing out that he made a lot of money for the Tyson Fury fight. Ten million dollars, I think, is what it said. <clears throat> but he would have potentially made more to fight John Jones because they offered him eight million to show up and fight. 
then he would have got pay-per-view points on that. Now, every pay-per-view point on it could be negotiated in terms of some people were only making a dollar a pay-per-view point. Some people were making 150, some were making up to 3. I've heard as high as 450. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, it depends on what your contract and negotiated it to in terms of your pay-per-view dollars. And let's just say, what would he have made on pay-per-view numbers? What do you think him and John Jones would have done? I think they would have been close to probably seven, 700. Okay. 700. 750. Eight. So that's one fight. Yeah. He would have already made more than fighting Tyson Fury. But I think where Chael's getting lost in this situation, and I think a lot of people are, I'm, is that I'm, now... Keep on talking, because I'm going to calculate okay. what I think he would have made. Okay. Now, in this fight with, with uh, the Chael Sar like he would have now that this has all happened. Now, look, if he would have just not performed against Tyson, this is what makes what he did so spectacular, is that he took a chance on himself, and he went out there and did that. He took a chance on himself, and he went out there and said, hey, if I even show remotely a fraction of what I'm good at, boxing, okay, and I can get people to, to start to buy into that I am a good boxer, this opens the doors for me to make a lot more than the $10 million. You can't knock him for that. And that's what Chael is saying. Like, he's not knocking him for that. But when you're talking about the actual money he made for one fight, he would have made more money fighting John Jones. But And then if you would have fought beyond that, you would end up fighting the younger guys as well, the Tom Aspinalls, the, the pro, maybe you would have fought Stipe again. I don't know, other guys that are there. You would have fought those guys. And would that money have been the same? I didn't see what the contract was negotiated. None of us did. Okay, But yeah. was that contract after the John Jones fight still $8 million? Was it still no. $10 million? No. no. We know it wasn't. No. But what was that number? Was that number I'm just a million? I can't tell you. I don't and know. No one, I, no I one know. can. Well, I, I do know that it was substantially less. Okay. I don't know so, exactly what it was. Uh, and that's just going off of people that are around Francis and yeah. stuff. But. Here's the thing to look at. If in fighting John Jones, Francis would have made about a dollar for the very first hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. pay per views. From one hundred fifty thousand to about three hundred fifty thousand, he would have made two dollars per. From three hundred fifty thousand to about five hundred thousand dollars, he would have made three dollars per. Mm -hmm. And from five hundred thousand past, he would have made four dollars. That would have ended up being somewhere around four million dollars. Yeah, I would guess. Okay, so if you're looking at you know somewhere around seven hundred fifty, eight hundred thousand, so total for the fight twelve million dollars. But here's the here's the 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 point that needs to be made out of this. Francis isn't all about money. Francis is about doing things that are important to him, and he wants to make money. But this is a guy that fought and fought, you know, the for the heavyweight championship making $600,000. Did he not? He fought Stipe yeah. and he wins. And then when he beat gone, he didn't make that much money either. Now he 585,000 is what he made. I, I believe when he beat gone 585. Yeah. But he also got, he got pay-per-view on that. Yeah. Okay. So he made more, but again, he's, he, I don't think that you know money is important to him, but not it's not the overriding factor. And the overriding factor for him was he wanted certain things. He thought that they were important. And he has a belief in that, and he's man enough to stand up for it. And that's where I have respect for Francis Ngannou because not everybody is going to be that person that can walk away from... $12 million, basically, to fight a John Jones, mm -hmm. okay? Because that's a lot of money. And when you're looking at, at a career that, and we talk all the time about how long is your career, it's, you know, over that fast. And that $12 million, you could put to a lot of things to invest, to buy homes, to set yourself up for the rest of your life. It's a great, you know, big number that a lot of people would like to have. <clears throat> He was able to say, didn't matter. No. I want to do these things. These are what's important to me, and this is what I'm going to stand for. And he did it. That's what you have to respect. Yeah, there's, look, guys that have done that throughout the career that you could say have been successful with that. GSP did it his way. Yeah. Didn't, definitely did not make Dana White happy. 
Habib did it his way. Yep. Not that it didn't make Dana White happy, but Dana understood his reasons behind doing it, knowing that his father had passed and all the but, situations the, that he had done. But the one thing that Habib had over Dana, and Dana knew it. Dana's smart. He goes, this guy can't be bought. No. He has his beliefs, and it doesn't matter how many freaking hundreds mm-hmm. I throw down, how many thousands, how many millions. Mm-hmm. This guy's going to follow what he believes is right. That's that's a that's why you have to respect him. Even you respect when Habib for that. Even when Habib was broke, he would tell me, "Brother, money." He's like, <laughs> "I have money." And even when he was broke, yeah. his idea of what it take what it took to live in Dagestan. He's like, "I when it, we didn't have any money, he's like, I still was wealthy." And what he meant by that was he had everyone he needed around him. Yeah. He had his family. He had his his mother and his father and his and Isla and his close close friends, which you see him now everywhere with. Even not at fights, but when they are not at fights, they are still together. They're still close close friends, constantly texting and talking to each other. Those are people that cannot be bought. Francis can't be bought. Once you come to the realization of like, look, I've got enough money to last me for a little bit. You make decisions based off of what you think is best for you, not what you think is is going to make me the most money, and that potentially doesn't work out, then you lose that. What I like sure. about this, what I'm trying to correlate between the two, is that Francis did it because it was he took a chance on himself, got the knockdown, okay, and that led into more opportunities, even though he didn't get the win. He got the knockdown, and that leads into more opportunities of people. Now he's ranked in the top 10 for boxing. <clears throat> Those guys are going to come after him. Okay? Doesn't matter. They're, they're going to say, well, you just won the distance with him. If I come out and smoke you and knock you out in round one, two, or three, okay, guess what? Now I'm going to get a shot at Tyson. I'm going to get that money fight. I'm going to do it. Now that's what, he, that's what he's bringing to the table. Now I believe he's going to end up making more than 10 probably up to 15 to 20 million for whoever he decides to fight next. That's what I think. Now, that may just that may burn out after that. Who knows? In the heavyweights, you never know. The buzz now is all about it. The MMA crowd is behind it. The boxing crowd is going, "Yeah, it was a this, it was a that." But guess what? They're going to tune in now. Like they I don't think a lot of the boxing fans tuned in the first time. No. I thought that I think uh, the MMA fans tuned in. Yeah. And now you've got you've sparked the interest of the boxing fans to go what happened in the first fight? Let me see this shit. Let me see if it's true. Let me see if this guy can, if he can Here, really well, box. Let's make this easy. I'm going to ask you a simple question, okay? Because this is what it did. Josh, who's the baddest man on the planet? Josh Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> you walked right into that yeah. one, buddy. No. Nope. Um, who's the baddest man on the planet? Who's the baddest man on the planet? <clears throat> you know who's got a great claim for that? Francis Ngannou. Ngannou. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where before, even though he was the UFC heavyweight champion, people mm-hmm. did not give him the credit. No. Everyone said, ah, John Jones, you know, he's running away from John Jones, all these things. No, he's not. And he has a substantial claim. Because if I put, you know, John Jones into a boxing match with Tyson Fury, probably not going to go well for John. Because you know he's just he's more of a, a he's a different type of fighter. He doesn't have power like Ngano. It's a lot of it's kicks gonna, though. He, he's mainly kick heavy, and, and that he he uses that, and it's you know that's what he has. <laughs> Boxing is not; it's one of his weakest elements for MMA. But you know that's he's still fucking the best goddamn MMA fighter I've ever seen. <clears throat> but with what happened, Francis Ngano can sit there and go. I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Yeah. And he's got a fucking, it's going to be hard to prove him wrong. That's true. That's true. But where I want to tie these two things in there, he's got a standing offer, which Don Davis says, the PFL founder, Don Davis, on Nate Diaz. He's got a standing offer of between $10 million and $15 million to take the fight with Jake Paul in the PFL. And he's hiding behind a rock. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to say this. He can say that. Nate doesn't need he, Nate doesn't need to fight. Again, that's a choice and it's great. The one thing I want to give Don Davis before we get on to any of this, he said something in that interview that you had to look at and go, God damn it, I love hearing that. And it's mm. that he said that, you know what, we want to put on these pay per view fights. And the one thing that we're willing to do is 
were willing to do these big money pay-per-view fights knowing that all we want to do is break even. We, as a company, don't need to make any money, but we need to break even. And all the money goes to the fighters. And you went, whoa. That's saying a lot. I was I was like, God damn. That's impressive that you as a company are willing to say that. Put that out there. Hey, we're not in the big money fights. We're willing to just break even mm -hmm. to get these guys to come fight for us and to put on a show. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's right. If they can do it, that's it's, they can. it's a tough business model to Absolutely sustain. Absolutely it is. It's hard to sustain yeah. that business Pay -per -view model because is not it, not easy. It's not just that, but if that fight ends up being a flop and you don't get the money, you, the numbers you deserve, you can end up t fucking biting yourself in the ass. Sure. <clears throat> um, but where where I feel like the same two things are the same, Don Davis and with and Dana White is that by throwing money at someone like a Nate Diaz, we saw in the Masvidal drug testing situation. Where they said, hey, you just fight the fight and then we'll take care of it after. And he's like, no, fuck you. Fucking fix this now. Yep. That's where you realize. And this is, it goes back for all the fighters that have stood their ground against the UFC. Those guys have banked on themselves and pretty much it's worked out they for win, them. They win, yeah. They win. They win. They win. And so Nate is someone who has bucked the system. He, I look at Nate. Nate's going to do well here in his, in his next fight. He's going to make good money doing what he's doing. And then after that, I think he's going to end up going back because if he does go back to the UFC, he fights that Connor fight. That will make him more than 10 to 15 million. That being well, said, and that's the whole point. That, yeah, that's what, but, when you're looking at this, you got to look and say, Nate's not looking at this just about this one fight. No. He's looking at what's past it. And he's got to figure out is fighting this one fight going to make me so much that this other fight, doesn't matter yeah. and that's a hard that's a hard say because you know for him to fight you know do you think the pfl is going to give him just a one fight contract i doubt it i doubt it and so it would be you either get to fight in the pfl against jake paul or you're going to take something else and fight against connor in the ufc well it's not even so much just the fight against connor it's the all the other things that come with fighting Connor. Yeah. John, he's not just going to make the money from fighting Connor and then make the money from the pit, the, from the pay-per-view numbers. He's going to get sponsors. He's going to get endorsement deals. He's going to get somewhere in there mixed in with the amount of, with the, just the endorsement deals alone that come with that fight. I think it's going to be, it's bigger than the Jake. It's the Jake, the Jake Paul be. thing was made money. I, yeah. it, it made him a lot of money. I understand that. But the, the way in which that the the UFC is able to piggyback that, and now that Don Davis has laid out his cards, we're going to pay him ten to fifteen. That's negotiating. Dana or Nate just takes that and goes, "Look, Connor, and look, Dana, yeah. this is on the table. M match it or beat it. Here, what do it's you want gonna me to do? Beat it. What it's going to be beat do? it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, match it or beat it. And and let's be honest, majority of everyone, I think a big majority of people would like to see Nate finish his career in the UFC. Yeah, I and agree. I think Nate because he's been there since he was a pup. You know that you he's probably thinking to himself like, look, I told these guys I'm going to go out and do my thing, and I'll be back to fight and whoop Connor's ass is what he's probably said the way he said it. Yeah, you know, um, I love hearing what the P, what Don Davis said though. I'm fine with breaking even. That's a tough business model to, to sustain. Yeah, but it is. But but tell you if what, you're it's a, ballsy. If you're a fighter, what are you thinking? You're loving it. I'm going, hey, that's what oh, I'm yeah. looking at. The, the, I'm I, looking. I, like, I like a guy that's going to sit there and say, <laughs> I, I, I'll make the money and they're, they're going to break even? Yep. Hell, hello. Yep. That's, the, that's something to be said about that. Look, when you have someone that is, look, right now it's not about the money. It's about making sure that I get all the best fighters and they understand that I'm putting their best interest at heart. That's what it's about. That's what it's about for him right now. I need to attract all the top level fighters to get them to come over here so I can get the best guy in every promotion to fight each other. And if I can do that, what that does also is it gets those other fighters from the UFC to start thinking to themselves, let me fight out this contract and just see what he's talking about. Let me see. 
Look, we talk, to, we talk about this all the time. Bellator pays more money because they have to to get you to come over. Yeah, they so have to. PFL. PFL does the same. Yeah. They have to. Otherwise, the best fighters or the top fighters would all stay over or they'd all stay or they'd all go yeah, to the UFC. If, if more money's there? Of course. Yeah. It's like if, even if it was the same money, they would stay. If there's if there's the same money or even just slightly under what the, what Bellator's using, they're gonna go to the UFC because there's other things that come with it. Yep. It's the notoriety. You know, fighters get in this shit for glory. They have got to get in there for all the notoriety. They want to be recognized in restaurants. They want to take pictures when they're at the theme park. They want to do all those things. Let's not lie about it. They're in it for that shit. Every fighter is. They you know sure we do it because we love it. We love doing it because we're addicted to the adrenaline. We are at all of those things. But at the end of the day, we love when a kid runs up and says, "Hey, can I get a picture with you?" You know what I mean? Like it's it's it, it makes you it automatically makes you feel good. And so Nate is beyond that now. He's like, "Look, I've done everything. People know me wherever I go. I don't doesn't matter. I'm gonna stick to my guns. This is a great this is a great idea for him to put it out. I wouldn't have put the money out, the money type situation out. Now that's leverage he can take to the UFC, and they're gonna probably match it or beat it to make sure that he comes over." To fight Connor because that's a huge fight for them. Yep. But I love the idea of what he's saying. If I'm every fighter, I'm going, hey, if all you got to do is break even, shit, I'm going to push the shit out of that. You're already seeing some of these comments here. We're looking at um, Juan Archuleta was on here, I believe. Did I read that right? Did you see the one? Yep. Damn. Yep. I'll take that fight. You know what I mean? Like he's, <laughs> he's already in there going, hey, let me, let me get in there. Yep. You know, fighters are always selling, always trying to sell themselves to get themselves. Jack Shore's in there, you know, Cassius Clay. Like these guys, they're all in there. They're all trying to get a fight. If you got a, if you got a, co if you got a CEO that is willing to say these things, yep. and can actually follow through with it, if I'm a fighter, I'm looking at that. You're gonna love him. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, hey, that's gonna wrap up our show. We just we just blurred on for about two hours. Hope you guys enjoyed Damn. it. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, I know it's John, it's past your bedtime, buddy, and I know. <laughs> You know, <laughs> not past my bedtime, man. I'm behind you now. You're on the West Coast. I'm on the West Coast. So. Yeah, yeah. Now I know I'm fucking exhausted. So. <laughs> now you know what it's like. Mm. Those late nights. Go to WayneInMerch.com. Pick up some of our sweaters. Look, it was freezing in Texas today. It was about 42 degrees tonight. Mm. We were out there trick-or-treating. But uh, we got the hoodies, got the Patagonias all on, and we we're uh, rocking it with the gloves and the beanies. We had a great time, but uh, enjoy. Get, get yourselves at WayneInMerch.com, some hoodies and some sweaters and some long sleeves and whatever it is that is available we need to get some on our way. Yes, we need beanies. We need long we need sleeves beanies. on there. Yes, sir. And John, take us away. For everyone out there, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all of the prayers and everything you guys gave me in those comments. I appreciate it. And we will see you.